What's going on, guys? DJ Jinx here from Sublevel Music. And today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a lo fi house track on the MPC Live 2. As you can see, I have the retro MPC here. And I'm um, just going to start with a empty project, nothing planned out. I don't even know what I'm really doing, to be honest. Um, I'm just going to load up some sounds, some drum sounds first, and uh, then I'll find a sample or a chord or something and just build it up from there. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to start off here by loading up some sounds. So I'm just going to browse my samples and let's see here. I think I'll go and grab my cassette 909. Um, samples here that I have. So one of the things I like to do when I first load up drums, especially when I'm making lo-fi music, lo-fi house music, is just kind of shave off some of the top end. So I'm just going to go into the, um, the program edit here. And to get there, I just what I do is I'll, I'll hit menu and pad 14. That takes me into the program edit and I'll go over to the envelope section where I get to the filter. I tend to like to use filter four and I just roll off the cut, cut off a bit, the low four. All right, and then I just go through and when you hit the next pad, it takes you right to that parameter. And even though these drum sounds are already lo-fi because I recorded them from, I did this a few years back now, these drums actually, and I recorded them from the Ableton stock 909 um, pack, the core library pack, I believe, or the drum machine pack. I don't remember exactly which one it was. And I just ran them direct to my cassette deck, which I have just sitting above my MPC right now and then recorded them back. And I've just had this pack for a while now. So they're already very lo-fi, but I like the filters on the MPC. So I'm gonna actually utilize those as well, just to make stuff even more lo-fi and dirty. that's just really dirty okay um and then just to tighten stuff up a bit i'm actually gonna use the decay i just go over to the envelope the amp envelope and go to start and as you can hear if i just hit the pad right now there's nothing there at the tail end of it but Right. If I go all the way, it's very boomy. I tend to like my kicks a little tighter, even though I sampled it that way. It's just taste, I guess, or the style you're making. I'm actually going to pitch this. And because when you pitch a sample down, it gets longer, I'm going to tighten it. And the same with the open half. And for the... Um, open and closed hat I want them to choke each other out so I'm gonna to go to the master section and just hit mute group one for both those so they can't play at the same time so basically every time I hit each pad chokes each other out for the closed and open hat all right so that's basically it I'm gonna just um, go back to my main here I'm gonna go 
kick it up to about 125 for this track. And I'm just going to lay down a kick drum on, well, we'll keep it at two bars and I'll just lay down a kick. Track two, just basic. Right, on track four, I like to put the open hat. With the open hat, I'm actually gonna do 16 level velocity so that I can play the open hat at different velocity levels. So I usually like to go low, high, low, high. So I'll do something like, something like that. Now I can also play with the time correct on the open hat, I could shift it a bit, something I don't always do. For some reason, I feel like doing it on this particular track. So I'm just gonna try and shift it. Let's just see what happens if I shift it by three. Let's go on selected. Let's make sure it's, uh, all right, let's see that. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Um, for the closed hat, I'm gonna try something a little bit different. Um, go back to my time correct, make sure that's back to zero. And I'm actually gonna jack the swing up to, let's do 66. That's one of my favorite swings. Um, what I'm gonna do on this, just to test it out is I'm going to take full level off, which will make the pad velocity sensitive to how hard or soft I touch it. And note repeat will be on. Just kind of give it that swing, see what that sounds like. Put that on track three. Let's just try that out. Mm, let me, you know, let me try that again. Full level back on. I'm gonna try and play with the pitch of the open hat. Gonna name my tracks before I move any 
further into the track itself. It's good to get into the habit of naming stuff as you go, even though I rarely do it, but I'm doing it tonight. gonna mix some of my individual drum hits right now if I just hit the mix button if you hit it twice if you hit it once it goes to the program volume if you hit it twice it goes to the pad the volume for each pad you have level pan mute right now we're in the level section so if I hit a pad I have the ability to just hit the pad and turn the volume up or down so just going to like especially this this ride here it's just too loud. If I shift this a little bit more, that one hit that I did not like. Let's just see if I can. Yeah, that one there is just not happening, man. There. Damn, 
did it again. The drum program right now it's named program 001 I'm gonna name it 909 okay and I'm gonna go over to track 9 I tend to put my samples or chords or whatever my main musical elements element is I tend to put it on track 9 bass on track 10 etc my drum elements. I, I, I try to stay organized that way. But it absolutely doesn't matter. You can do whatever the heck you want to do. Okay. Uh, let's see here. I have no idea. I don't even know what I want to do, but I'm going to browse some chords, some samples, and see what I find. And I want, for the purposes of auditioning these samples, I don't want them to play over each other. Like right now, whoa, 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 that's just going to, all right, no. I don't want them to play over each other, so I'm actually just going to turn the program down for now. Go back to program edit and just... Now they, they all cut each other off, so I can just like, yeah. And I'm gonna put this in 16 level tune and put my original pad at nine. So the original pitch of the sample is not there. 16 levels, there we go. And actually, before I go any further with that, I'm going to do exactly what I did to make them even dirtier. Go to the envelope section, go to filter four, and I'm just going to go through them and filter each one. That's pretty cool. And it's house music, man. This is simple stuff. It doesn't have to be complicated. All right. Let's try that. So I'm going to go double length to four bars. 
Um, maybe let's make it eight. Let's see what happens, and I'll play with that pad. I'll just put that in there. Track 10, I'm gonna go bass. And for bass, what I've been using lately um, is the plugin that's built right into the MPC, um, the bass line. It's, it just does the trick. It's, you know, I'm just gonna go pulse width. Okay, so. So I want to be able to keep this locked into the scale and just kind of freely jam to find a bass line that works. And in order for me to find out what key this is in, I'm going to actually bounce the riff that I played. So um, this here, I'm going to solo it. Right. So that there, I'm going to bounce that to sample. Right. And what this is going to allow me to do, if I just load it up in the sample assign, you can see that in the sample pool. I don't know if you could see that clearly on the screen, but there's a file named bounce chord. So I'm going to put that there and basically just go to my program edit in the sample section. And it's showing me the key, which is an F. So I'm not going to use that file, but I can actually just delete that from the program now. And then if I go back to the bass track and I go to the pad perform, I could just lock it into that and see if I actually, if I can play a decent bass line around that key. Something like that. happened there but for some reason the camera stopped and I was still making this track thinking it was recording and it stopped so basically to backtrack now um, what I ended up doing is I ended up coming up with a few different 
sequences, just variations. So to give you some context, this is the main one with the bass line that I added. Basically, that's all I did. Um, so that's all that was missing. I laid down the bass line, added a few different variations with the sequences, or I play with the kick drum. Just changing the kick drum from just being straight four, four, four on the floor to just some variations there, as you can hear. And I put the filter on the ride. I assigned that to this Q-Link knob just for a quick little track mute jam right so if I go back to sequence one I could just do like a quick jam so basically I'm in the track mute section now and I'm just gonna see what I can play with That's pretty much the track right there. Really simple, straightforward, old school, lo-fi house track. Um, basically, that's it. You know, you can jam this out. Usually at this point, I would either just jam this straight out the analog outputs, one and two, into my Scarlet, straight into Ableton. I'll probably do a little bit of mixing first, maybe some processing. Um, on the uh, the master channel or some of the individual tracks or maybe not sometimes i don't even do that and it just sounds good just straight out of the mpc um that's yeah that's basically what i'll do uh record that straight in i try to get it done in one take if i can with using the mutes filters with the q link knobs stuff like that just try to get it all in one but if i can't get it done in one take i will solo out each track kind of an old school way of doing things but i'll keep the sequence running in both the in both ableton and the mpc and just solo out each track and then i have control over all the individual stems and i can balance stuff in ableton mix stuff further if i have to so that's pretty much how i do things and um yeah there you have it lo-fi house mpc live too